Juliet, hello, great to catch up again. Hello, Christy Lee, lovely to see you. How is your week going? Uh, not bad, it's school holidays. So there's a degree of chaos that comes with all of that, <laughs> with the juggle. And, you know, I have teenagers who feel like days are for sleeping, whereas my I'm, my whole view is that days are for getting out there and doing something. Yes. So there's always that little sort of juggle going on. Yes, teenagers, yeah, teenagers are wonderful yeah. for that. But I do find it quite beneficial <laughs> in comparison to homeschooling when they will sleep half yes. the morning on holidays because I can get a fair bit done during those first few hours yes. of the day while they're busy. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I definitely feel your pain there. I'm like, get outside. And no, they'd yes. much rather sleep and be mushrooms, I think. But I'm sure that's typical yes. of all teenagers. We're not alone. So, um, which is. I know. I try, I try to keep remembering that and thinking, yes, I was a teenager once and I must have felt like this, you know. And I'm sure I did. I'm sure my parents were trying to shove us outside. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's just normal. Now, I love this topic we are chatting about today because it is a huge pain point for business owners um, and leaders. Yeah. And I think it's something that I see people struggle with a lot. And we're talking about how to say no to our staff today which is mm -hmm. no is no one's mm -hmm. favorite word let's be honest but sometimes you have to say no don't you yeah look you do and I think it is hard and particularly I think it's hard if you feel close to your team to your mm -hmm. staff mm -hmm. and you feel that you're all personally connected in some way that's when I see it's really difficult and I think there's some uh, some simple things we can do that help us hold those boundaries because it really is about not just setting a boundary mm. but making sure that we hold that line in a sense and that is our job, that's our role. Um, and to me the classic thing we can do is get the other person to come to no. So mm. instead of us having to say no. So, uh, you know, we were talking earlier about an example where someone wants more leave than they're entitled to, for instance, or taking leave before it's accrued. Mm. And I think there's, uh, you know, what I've done in the past with teams is this, it's a whole um, approach where you say, so we get them to answer the question. So how much leave have you got left? How much have you taken? So have you got leave left over? So it, you want to take leave that you haven't accrued, for instance. Um, how, is, how am I going to manage that with the rest of the team? Because obviously everybody can't take leave they haven't accrued. So what do you think would be a fair way to approach this? And I think if we can keep turning it back in that way, mm. we're not being uh, we're not being difficult. We're not being argumentative. What we're saying is, you tell me how this can be a fair outcome. Because so often what people are asking for, I find, is not fair. It's only fair to them. You know, they just want something that suits them without yes. thinking about the bigger picture that we as a leader need to consider. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I think I think the questions are so powerful. I talk a lot about the quality yeah. of the questions and the quality of responses and yeah. getting curious. And I think this is just one of those examples um, yes. because I do see business owners, they struggle to set boundaries and it's out of niceness. It's out of they want to do the right thing by their people. And I think there's a almost an expectation that you've got to look after your team so well and always be putting them first. But there is a line in the yeah. sand where if it doesn't work for the business and also if it doesn't work for you as the manager or the owner of the business, then yeah. it's not only okay, but it's actually your responsibility to say no. Because just like you've said, often what an employee is asking for is not fair on the rest of the team. Yes, I think that's right. And when we talk about looking after the team, so often I see team members interpreting that as you must look after me. But the reality is we have to look after the whole team not just one person. And the rest of the team, you can be absolutely certain, is watching us to see how we respond to these situations. So if we say yes to one person, well, why wouldn't the rest of them get whatever we've just said yes to as well? Mm. And if you don't do that, then there's this equity issue about, well, I work just as hard or probably harder. Why am I not getting this thing you've just said yes to or not said no to, yes. to this other person? Exactly. Yeah. And I think that builds a sense of resentment amongst the other team members. And when you've yeah. got resentment, you've got all sorts of issues starting to unfold from there. You've got trust issues, you've got engagement issues. It's just, it, it kind of snowballs. But I absolutely agree. The rest of the team are watching you for what you do. Yeah. And if they see that you're just letting one person get away with, you know, everything or just being really mm -hmm 
unwilling to stand your ground and be firm although you think you're doing it out of niceness what the team see is closer to weakness I guess than niceness isn't it absolutely yes I think that's exactly how they interpret it and it, it sets up that whole dynamic where then they start looking for other things where you haven't been equitable you know or other things where they feel they've missed out and so you can set and train this really negative sort of spiral where everything spirals downward from there because as you say you've then you've messed with the trust mm. you might not have destroyed it completely but they're starting to doubt you know mm. and so you, you start the cracks start to appear um, and once that happens once you start to lose trust then they stop talking to you you know and you stop hearing what you need to hear and they start talking about you mm -hmm. and I think yes. that's you know uh, so yes I, I think you're right this we're trying to be kind and we're trying to um connect with our people and look after them and do all of those good things but sometimes we actually have to put the stake in the ground and say for the best in the best interests of the team or the business mm -hmm. um this is not going to happen this can't happen yeah um, and I'm really I'm sorry if you're unhappy about that but you know I'm making decisions with a bigger picture in mind yeah and I see this happen a lot more as teams grow so a business will yeah. start off and you might have a handful of team members and so you can be fairly flexible and you can often say yes to everything without it compromising the team or compromising productivity because there's only a few <laughs> oh bless you <laughs> there's Sorry. only a few people in the mix but as the team mm. grows it becomes more of a logistical management issue and yeah. you know you simply can't say yes to things because you can't afford to have multiple people yeah. in the same team off at once or you can't afford to not have you know productivity in that area for a long period of time while someone's taking an extended leave and I think that's a pain point. It's like, a you know, every time you grow, there's different pain points. This is one of those growth pain yeah. points in business that whilst it does sometimes mean change on your part in terms of how you approach things, it's actually okay. I mean, Brené Brown says, clear is kind, unclear is unkind. And this is one of those instances yes. where being clear and setting the boundary, and that might mean, because mm -hmm. you know, for some people, they don't actually have a boundary yet. So they've got to set the boundary and then they've got yes. to be willing to actually uphold it and two, two different steps in the process. I think that's really true. And I think you've got, you know, we talk about bringing your people with you. As a team grows, you do need to bring with you the people who've been around for a while. Mm. And, and there's yeah. conversations there about, oh, well, now we're bigger. We need to change the way we do something. So we were a bit relaxed about this or that. We actually need to now make that more structured. Um, and we need to make sure that we have things in place. And perhaps we need to say, look, I know in the past I've said yes to these sorts of things, but actually because we're bigger, we can't do that anymore. And I'm sure you all understand that. I'm sure you can all see how that just wouldn't work anymore. Mm. But bringing people yeah. with us, I think, is a really important thing, not just assuming that they will understand because we're bigger, things are different. We actually sometimes need to say that to them. That's so um, true. And set ground rules. Yeah, they can't yeah. read our minds, despite the fact that we think our thinking is yeah. obvious and common sense. Yeah. That's such a good point. Our team don't necessarily see it through the same lens as us because it's not their business. And I think that's so important. And it's a trap we all fall into that we think just because we see it as a business owner that they will obviously be seeing things from the same perspective. They don't. And we shouldn't expect them to, I think, either. Yeah, I think that's right. But I think so often we do. And we're so busy with the growth phase of our business that we forget to have some of these conversations. And I think when you get to something like a conversation we've just sort of talked about where, where it is a no, it's good to take that back out to the whole team and say, I think there's been some, you know, some misunderstandings or some misapprehensions here. So I want to be really clear with all of you about what this looks like now. Mm -hmm. You know, so even at that point, you can go back to the team and talk about it and bring them along. Absolutely. But I think the earlier you do it, the better. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the leave example is a great example because I, I so often see businesses really struggle to manage leave. Mm -hmm. And it is, you know, it is tricky. And I think we're going to come into a season of 
a lot of leave applications post COVID because no one's been going anywhere for the last 18 months and everyone's chomping at the bit yeah. to travel. So I think we are going to see a real challenge in managing leave in the next 12 to 18 months because everyone's going to want to travel and we understand that because we probably want to travel too but we're going to have to be really firm in how we manage this and I think it's a great example to demonstrate that questioning technique um yes. do you think that questioning technique could be used you know in you know other instances where you need to say no to a staff member definitely I think almost anywhere where you're clear that uh, and usually what they're asking for is something that benefits them but doesn't benefit the whole team, Yeah, uh, you know, whatever it is. And I think, and it can be about pay rises, it can be about um, coming in, you know, work hours and flexibility and those sorts of things. Um, I think any time that happens, you can turn that around into a conversation about what's fair and what's in the interest of the whole team, mm -hmm. you know, because we need to keep coming back to that, you know. Uh, and you can say things like because we do want to help people you know I really want to help you sort this out um, but I have to think about the whole team so why don't you have a think about how this would work um, if the whole team were to do it mm -hmm. or give me some some compromise position that isn't going to compromise the whole team but mm -hmm. they can still work for you so I think keep pushing it back to them for the solution I don't think we have to come up with the solution each time mm. um, but you know when someone asks for a pay rise well that's yes you've been working brilliantly and really hard but um, talk to me about how that how your work sits with where the rest of the team is at mm -hmm. you know and um, are there others in the team you think have been working as much as you have or you know delivered this project as with you or whatever and so <clears throat> I think we need to get them to think of the whole team, because I think so often we are just focused on ourselves. I see it so often in teams where people talk about fairness, but they mm. only mean fairness for themselves. <laughs> they don't mean fairness for everybody. Yeah. You know, and they talk about opportunity, but they only mean opportunity for themselves. Yeah. They're not thinking about how everybody progresses. So I think there's absolutely using these questions to push back and get them to think about it is great. And just on your point about people wanting to plan leave, it's a really good opportunity now before that happens mm. to say to people, don't come to me the week before you want to take two weeks off and tell me about it. <coughs> me. You know, the more, uh, the more notice you can give me, the more I can plan for it. And, you know, set those, I think set some parameters. Do you... Yeah. Do you see that happening i a thousand percent agree with you that this is the time to have mm. the conversation because 2022 is going to be a year of change we're going to see turnover we're going to see mm. leave we're going to see lots of things and i think if you set yeah. this, set it up now you're not going to have to have as many yeah. difficult conversations come next year and i think Yes. You know, a lot of the things I recommend to businesses are around having a really strong leave policy, which is a technical HR document, mm. but it just helps in terms of setting boundaries. And I think you've just got to communicate that. And, so, and, you know, one of the things I say to business owners is you need to let staff know that leave is upon request and approval. It's not, yes, they're entitled to it, but they're entitled to it at a time that's mm. mutually suitable for both parties. So yes. just because they request leave is at no point that's not approved until it's approved. And I think communicating that at this time as well and saying, look, I appreciate that many of you are going to want to be taking time off and travelling. Obviously, mm. as a business, we need to continue to operate. So get mm. your leave applications in so I can consider them. Um, there will be times when I won't be able to approve everyone's leave at the time they want because we can't be having a situation where we've got too many people off at once or we can't have everyone off on leave during our busiest time. So just, yeah, I agree, jump on the front foot, mm -hmm. have the communication now. Um, and I think that is definitely going to be important over the next sort of one or two years when everyone's looking to make up a bit of time for, for what we've missed recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think so. And I think it's also perhaps as we move, well, we've already moved to virtual teams, but, but as things like virtual and hybrid teams start to get set in stone in a way too I think it's also an opportunity to talk about you know work hours and the way we work and set some of those parameters oh. so I think leave is a biggie because it's a pain point for people and it's a very personal pain point mm. but I think there's also other conversations we can get on the front foot with so we don't have to be saying no 
down the track. And I think that's it. And this is where I do see business owners struggle as well is in an attempt to be super flexible, they've created so Mm. much such a lack of structure in their business Mm. that they realize you know afterwards that it doesn't work for them and then they try and pull it back and I think you know it's okay that you've tried to be really flexible and you've realized you've gone too far and to pull it back and again this is one of those things just to own that and say yes Mm. you know I let you set your own hours and I was trying to be super flexible we didn't know what this was going to look like but what I've identified is that actually isn't working for me and it's not working for the business. So we need to get a bit more structure in place here. And I need to bring that back and just own that and have that conversation yeah. that, yes, I let it happen, but now I'm going to bring it back because it, it's not, it's no longer serving the business. And of course, I understand that that means that, you know, the employee may not be hundred percent happy with that, but I think what we also need to remember, this is your business you get to control how it works. Yes. And if it's not working for you, then you need to make change, even if it means that the employee is not 100% happy. And I think this questioning technique that you've shared is a, another powerful way to do that because you can say, I understand that you like to work at 7 p.m. at night. Do you think it's fair mm-hmm. then that I have to be waiting for your emails when I'm trying to spend time with my family? And mm-hmm. using that fairness, using that questioning, is just, yeah. again, a way for them to see that whilst it works for them, it's not in the common good for everyone. I, I think that's right. And, and get them to own that solution. How could this work so that you um, can get your work done, but in a way that helps the team progress stuff without everybody waiting till midnight for things to come through? So exactly. get them to develop that solution. Yeah. I, I love your point too, and I meant to pick up on it earlier about, you know, This is your business. So, and you're the leader. So it's okay for you to make things work for you, you know, because if they don't work for you, then chances are over time they're not going to work for anybody. Yeah. So, you know, this sort of um, the saying no has to be about protecting the way you need things to work. Mm. Um, And if you need to take leave, you need to take leave. And if that means you have to say no to other people, then that's what you do because this is your business. Exactly. Um, But, you know, owning that I think is okay too. Yeah, and it doesn't mean you're the bad guy. You're the one that's putting in all the blood, sweat and tears into this business and all the money and everything else. No employee is doing that. That's on you. So you... Well, you're taking the risk. Exactly, exactly. And if you build a team... And build a business structure that you resent because it's not working for you guess what's going to happen mm. you're going to close it down and no one's going to have a job so you know you do yeah. get to make the tough decisions and you do get to own that and it is totally mm. okay because it's your business so you get that benefit because yeah. you have all the other difficult stuff that's on your plate that you are mm. dealing with so yeah it's not greedy and it's not selfish it's your right i think that's really important mm. And I think it's just so easy to lose sight of that, and which comes back around to this sort of difficulty of saying no. It's easy to sort of think, oh, no, I should look after them, you know, and they're my people and it's my responsibility. But but there is an element of putting your oxygen mask on first mm-hmm. in all of this. Absolutely. You yeah, know, if you're not looking after um, yourself and how you want the business to run, um, yeah. it's just never going to work. And I do see it happen where businesses are set up to suit people and not the business owner, and uh, it's just mm-hmm. not a viable long-term option and you will you know you'll end up saying I'm just going to do it on myself or I'm not going to have this business anymore so it does need to be a sustainable model and sustainable means you want to be there running it and that's not going to happen if you're resentful so um, it is yes I I understand it's not fun to say no to staff but Mm. sometimes it is in the best interest of you your own sanity and mental health and definitely for your business and your team I totally agree. Um, one other thing I would suggest is if you're not comfortable with these conversations is practice them. Mm. So either with somebody at home, just get them to take the other role and argue the point just so you get to sort of try out some approaches yeah. beforehand and, and sort of refine your questions if you need to or just do it in the mirror, you know, whichever works for you. 
but have a practice if you feel like you need to before you get in the room to have the conversation. I think that's a good idea because, you know, getting someone at home even and even wording them up and say, these are the things I think this person might say, these are going to be their objections. Yes. It gets you used to reacting in real time to those objections and don't give them the exact wording because you, you want to be surprised as you will be when you talk to the employee. But I think yeah. that's a great um, it's, it's a great way to get the nerves out of the situation and give you a bit more confidence. Mm -hmm. And as you said, to practice and maybe refining those questions because when you're asking questions, one of the other important things is, is to try and keep them sort of open-ended to an extent because if they're Very much so. questions, you're going to get the wrong answer. <laughs> it's not going to be yes. beneficial. So you need to practice asking questions that are open-ended but are also going to lead the employee where you want them to go. Yeah, I think so. And I think if you feel like the conversation's uh, running away from your control, you can end it. Mm -hmm. So let's, okay, uh, uh, it's that whole sort of, well, I'd like you to go away and have a think and can you come back to me, you know, this afternoon or tomorrow or whatever with some ideas about how you think this should work mm -hmm. and we'll talk about it more then. You yeah. know, so don't be scared to stop the conversation as well. Um, if you really feel important. like it's getting, it's running away, if you feel like they're taking control of it and sort of doing the, but it's not fair and but it's my right and, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's so important that you are in control to stop the conversation and, and asking them to come back to you with a solution that mm. is fair for the business, is fair for the team mm. and it's fair for you and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, not all about them basically but without saying that directly. Yes. So um, yes. going away and having that time to reflect might actually let them take the emotion out of it because often it's emotion that they're responding mm -hmm. with and come back to you with some mm -hmm. more sensible alternative yeah. options. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it just lets you keep control of that as well and gives you space to breathe and reflect yeah. um, on how things are going. And you can ask them to go and, you know, talk to their colleagues as well to yeah. come up with their solution you know there's no harm in getting them because it, what I see sometimes in teams is that people come to their manager with the plan for what works for them but they haven't talked to their colleagues uh, because it's inherently unfair for their colleagues yes. what they want to do exactly so getting them to go out and you know talk to their colleagues as part of coming up with a solution can be a powerful thing to do as well yeah and even getting them to put I think themselves just keeping control is important yeah, getting them to put themselves in their colleagues' shoes as well, you know. If, yes. if Mary took that month off and you had to cover her workload, how would you feel about that? Um, mm -hmm. Because people yeah. inherently don't tend to not like letting their colleagues down uh, and they're much more happy to let their manager down. So often it can be a nice yes. little power play to, to get them to put themselves in, in those shoes. Yeah, I think that's a great plan, mm. yes. Mm. Oh, it's a tricky one. It's tricky and it, look, it's never going to be an easy thing, but I think we do as leaders have to just get used to it and get comfortable with it. Yeah. And um, I think that questioning technique that you've shared is gold, especially for people that are really uncomfortable just, you know, keeping firm. Ooh, um, yes. It allows them to yeah. not be that yeah. hard one and to allow the employee mm -hmm. to come to that conclusion on their own, which is excellent. Yeah, good. Excellent. Right. Thanks All for right. sharing that, Juliet. That's awesome. No, it's a pleasure. It's a great conversation. I do. I just. I see it happen a lot, and I know how tough it can be. Mm. Um, yeah. And I think, yeah, we just need to keep talking about these things because there are ways to deal with them. Yeah. Um, yeah, and not feel overwhelmed by them. So, yeah, great. Absolutely. Always a great chat. We'll talk again on the next episode. Lovely to talk, Chrissy Lee. Lovely to see you. Bye. Bye bye.